Big vibes, stay blessed, and say this is your boy Black Finesse. I'm a little confused, bro, because I ain't gonna lie. There's so many games coming out right now, bro. Like, first you got College Football 25, then you got Madden 25, then you got Call of Duty Black Ops 6, then you got other stuff like uh, uh, what do you call it? Maximum Football. You got you got a whole bunch of games coming out this year. Um, as far as this game by itself, I, I need your y'all real quick. If y'all want me to actually make an, uh, another history's best roster on college football 25, we talking, I will do my due diligence and go through all teams and we talking literally put the best players on every team who's ever played for that college. I will probably uh, give me at least 10 to 15 likes. I don't even care. Like, give me those amount of likes and I'll probably do it. Because I didn't want to get college football. I'm not going to lie. I don't think I'll be able to keep up with how many games are coming out. Because I, I mainly play Call of Duty and Madden, sometimes Rocket League and shit like that. But, and as far as this video, this is College Football 25 rankings. Uh, they're out and people are mad. Uh, understandable. But I don't know, man. Like, I'm, I'm starting to get a little convinced to get the game. I'm probably already too late as far as the pre-order because people already started started getting um getting the game, doing early gameplay and shit like that. But I don't know, man. Like same thing I'm doing for Madden, I could do for college football, but that will require a lot of time, bro. Like we talking, it's gonna take me three months to do. I'll be honest with you. But let's go. We've got some more news about EA Sports College Football 25 to go over today. So earlier today, EA Sports did release the top 25 offenses and the top 25 defenses for the upcoming game, which means a lot of people are going to be mad today because anytime somebody ranks anything, everybody gets mad. It doesn't matter who's ranking it, which it is doesn't true. matter what's being ranked. No one's ever going to agree, and there's really never a definitive way to rank anything. So it's always a big time. I'm not going to lie, this shit looks dope as hell, bro. Twitter being really angry today. I'm not going to lie, this looks dope. The years, people always get mad over the rating. So it's always kind of a fun thing to talk about because, let's be honest, everybody thinks their team is top five or top ten at everything, and it's just not the case. Not everybody can be top five or top ten. Also, there's always going to be some controversial rankings in there. I mean, especially if, if, so if we're talking that right you got to wait for the season to start in order for the teams to go up. News for this game we're gonna have the dynasty deep dive i believe next week we're gonna have some gameplay coming soon as well make sure to subscribe and turn the bell icon on so you don't miss those videos when they go live i'd really like to hit 600k subs before the release of this game good so everybody lord watching, just subscribe eric way with this came a long a way days. bro so here on their website they made a post about the offensive and defensive power rankings they kind of explained what goes into them and they seem meticulously examined hundreds of thousands of data points to arrive at our team's power rankings with the help of our friends at pro football focus the team analyzed all 134 rosters thousands of players years worth of game film and mountains of stats ultimately arriving at our team's power rankings the rankings are subject to change in future updates which they will these things will probably change every week just like they do in madden so in some ways it's kind of a little bit pointless because within a few weeks of the game being out there can be some pretty significant differences here but this is just a starting point also something to note before we jump into this that you need to consider is that rankings for something like this are also heavily projection based so they are going off of you know previous years they're going over the rosters who teams brought in who they lost coaching changes all of that stuff of course but they're also in some ways projecting what they think they're going to do this year so just because a team did good last year well if they lost a ton of good players if they changed coaches and there's uncertainty well they might not be projected to do as good this year so you have to kind of factor that in as well but regardless there's going to be a lot of disagreements because that's just how rankings work and there's even some i disagree with so let's look here are the top 10 offenses to start we have georgia oh, wow. at a let's take a look let's take a look real quick we got georgia at, at one oregon at two uh alabama at three texas at four ohio state at five lsu at six Miami at 7, Colorado at 8, interesting. Uh, Missouri at 9, and Clemson at 10. Wow, these are the top 10 best offices. Well, Oregon at a 94 overall, so they're tied for the top spot. Technically, we've got Alabama at 91, Texas at 91, Ohio State at 89, LSU at 89, Miami at 89, Colorado at 89, Missouri at 89, and Clemson at 87. Now, the first thing I've seen people complain about just off of the top 10 was that Colorado was too high. And this is pretty high based off Which what is they true. did last year. However, I do think they're projected to be much better this year. I mean, yeah, Sanders but they should only go based off better. last they year. Played together. They've returned a lot of players they've got continuity will they be in the top eight or technically technically they're rated as a top five offense if you but then again you 
also got to realize it's like overall, not four out of the ten teams are 89. Or five so, out of the ten teams. I don't teams. think they're going to be that good, but they're probably going to be significantly true, better than they were four, last five. year. Yeah, but like again, half the teams are 89. The cover of the game. Colorado is like a hot button topic. A lot of people hate Colorado. So I do think they move some people maybe higher or lower than they should be to kind of get some conversation going. And also the fact that they're using pro football focus, that alone for a lot of people is a hot topic thing because some people live and die by pff and then other people absolutely hate pff and think that their system isn't very good at all or at least that it's not good for every player or every position group you know it, there's never going to be a definitive way to rank these players no one's going to ever agree fully so i try not to get too angry over this stuff now we're going to move on to 11 through 25 so we've got a few teams here at 87 overall so keep in mind all these teams are technically tied for the like 10th spot because they're all 87 overall you've got utah <sighs> penn state old miss kansas so Arizona, it's, so i might be able Next to do a, a legends roster since it's 25 teams there's less teams in the nfl i could i could but like i said give me 10 to 15 likes and i will do it i will get the game and i will take the time to do research and do it because we talking if i actually did research on college football i probably would watch it more and I probably would have fun playing it because I, when I create these rosters, like I do, do in Madden, a lot of people download the rosters. Like, we're talking two to 3,000 people on average because, like I said, I'm not that big of a YouTuber yet for people to really see my stuff. But the moment I put that up and how famous college football is going to be, bunch of teams at 85 on, overall we've got Notre Dame, Texas A&M, Memphis, SMU, and UCF. And then we've got the remaining 83 overalls to round out the top. So we talking Jarvis Landry and freaking Odell Beckham with the Virginia and then Joe, Joe, Joe uh, no, not Joe Burrow. Yeah, Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham with uh, LSU. Because I think they do this on purpose to stir up conversation, to get people mad a little bit. Because when people get mad at the, at the list, you know, they're going to comment on them more, which gives it more promotion. There's probably a lot of teams that are 83 overall offense, and they're going to leave some of them out of the top 25 for different reasons. They're going to leave them out because maybe it's going to stir I up guarantee. conversation. To or you, because they think some of these if I do the roster, notable or they're gonna create more Miami games. would be the best. For example, a team that I saw a lot of people say probably should be in the top 25 is Tennessee. Now, obviously, they lost some important players, but I would expect Tennessee to still be a pretty good offense. They very well may be rated at 83 overall offense, which would mean technically they would be a top 22 offense because there's all these other teams that are at 83 overall and it starts at the 22 spot. So, if you're an 83 overall offense, you're technically a top 22 offense in the game, but they have to come off the 25 list somewhere and they might just leave out tennessee because they think oh people are going to talk about this if we don't actually put them in a 25 spot now another thing i saw people complain about is how is michigan not in the top 25 they're the defending national champs well again they might be top oh 22 so there's more than 25 sure teams gonna, at least be in the 80s because they're michigan. i don't know so, man there's michigan too many teams really known as some elite offense either they were always known as an elite defense or at least recently last year they were like 70th in yards per game i know again, derrick henry played for thing, alabama really didn't he starters early in some games because they were winning so much uh, you also can factor in that you know their play style is a little bit more ground and pounder it was but then you also got to factor in well they lost a lot of big name players they lost the qb the running back they lost other players they lost their coach so there's a lot of uncertainty about maybe how they're going to do this year and they already weren't a team even in their best season in recent memory they weren't even a team that was considered an elite offense anyway but again they might actually be in this top 25 if they're at 83 overall we just don't know because these are only the teams that they've shown us now we're going to get into the defenses but really quickly let me shout out today's video sponsor underdog fantasy if you like sports and wow. you like winning money Let's see. yeah like college football looks promising but it's just a matter of if i'm going to be able to play all three games bro and you just can't beat that so and now doing let's look two at the rosters. Top 10 so we've got Ohio State at a 96 overall. We've got Georgia at a 94 overall. And then we've got a bunch of teams at a 90 overall. We've got Oregon, Utah, Alabama, Clemson, Notre Ohio Dame, and Michigan. Defense. And then we've wow. got Texas, Penn State, and Utah at an 88 overall. Now, again, I'm going to kind of show you how people sometimes will get mad at this, but you have to pay attention. So some people will be like, Michigan at seven, even though that's still very high to be a top 10 defense, Michigan at seven feels low. Michigan is one of the best defense defenses they were last year they're projected to be another top defense this year but when you look at it they're technically a top three defense because there's multiple teams that are rated 90 now of course could they have put michigan in the three spots sure like but putting them in the seven 
the spot again. I feel like five out of the stir up ten the teams are ninety. It looks like they're rated worse than teams that they're actually on par with, but really they're a top three defense in the game. And the same goes for eighty eight overall because if you look at the eleven through twenty five spot, you'll notice that there's a number of eighty eight overalls as well here. So you've got. Florida State, Oklahoma, and Iowa. Iowa is another one of those schools that's always been known, at least lately, for having an amazing defense. Like, their offense is awful, but their defense is so good that they win a lot of games. Now, could you have put Iowa in the top 10? You could have put them as high as number 8 because they're 88 overall but they leave them out of the top 10 because that's going to stir up conversation even though they're technically rated as the eighth best defense in the game then you've got a few 86 overalls with virginia tech wisconsin usc and auburn and then you've got a ton of teams at 84 overall lsu texas a&m colorado oklahoma state louisville north carolina kansas state and florida and here is where the next thing comes into play so you can see that there's a bunch of 84 overalls here and there's probably a lot more than this the same with offenses is how they ended at 83 there's probably a ton of 83 overall offenses and there's probably a ton of 84 overall rated defenses meaning that this is kind of the bottom tier for the defenses of at least the top end schools right the smaller schools are probably going to have worse ratings because here's the thing when you look at a school like lsu for example usually they were good on defense but lately they've been very bad on defense but they're still overall going to have higher end talent than the smaller schools even if last year they performed worse than some of those schools when you factor in who they play and you factor in you know the the type of recruits and the talent that they have on their team they've got some guys on that defense that are going to go high in future drafts but you know the coaching scheme or the way they're being used well, right now. we still have top <coughs> players so they're still not going to be rated in like the 70s for example like some of the lower schools maybe i don't know you can make it a deeper type a deeper route that's the name recruits so when you're looking at these 84 overalls this is really the bottom tier of like the notable schools because people are saying well how the heck is colorado in the top 20 or technically top 18 at 84 overall they were one of the worst defense i think in yards per game they were like they were definitely bottom 10 last year now, yeah, granted, Colorado gets scored on be scored on that. a lot. Projected to be better than that, but they were really bad last year. So to have them in the top twenty, that's something that people are going to talk about and say there's just no way they should be top twenty. And I agree, I don't think they should be in the top twenty-five. But again, when you're looking at some of the talent that they have, and you're looking and you understand that well, eighty-four overall for these bigger name schools that get a lot of attention and they get a lot of recruits, eighty-four overall defense is not considered a good defense. You're not really considered, in my opinion, a good defense until you're like in the eighty-eight overall. At least that's how Madden has done it in the past. So I'm thinking they're using a lot of similar criteria when they're rating these teams. If you're not like an 88 overall or 87 overall or better, you're not really that great of a defense for a top end school. Because again, I mean, even USC being at an 86, that's not great, but it also feels higher for the level of defense they've played lately. But you also have to factor in, you know, how are they being projected maybe this year? Or again, how are they going to compare to the very lower end schools that don't have the type of talent that USC has, even though USC doesn't put it together together on the field they still have better talent than a lot of schools out there so i just kind of say that to say when you see some of these teams at the bottom of these top 25 lists there's probably a lot of other schools that have similar ratings here and these are kind of considered not so good but because they're listing certain teams like a colorado up so high that's going to trigger a lot of people to comment and say there's no way they should be that high which i agree with but 84 overall is technically not going to be that good for a defense in this game when you got colorado and you're going up against these top offenses right these offenses that are 88 plus you're going to kind of feel the gap there they're not going to have the type of players that are going to be able to stop ohio state's offense or texas's offense or you know penn state's offense for example and another thing you have to consider with all of this that i don't think See, there are a lot of know, big name people in different schools these big schools so years. number one ea doesn't really do a very wide rating scale they never have i think it would be better if they did i think it would differentiate more i think you might see it a little more in this game because there's just so many schools so you will see you know some in the 70s but like with madden you don't really see a very wide scale and ea even in this game you're not going to see a very drastically wide scale so the difference between you know an offense or a defense that's rated 90 or 84 that's a pretty significant difference with the way ea scales because you're probably not going to see a lot in the 70s so low 80s is going to be kind of the bottom tier at least again for the bigger name schools another thing 
in my opinion, again, just from dealing with Madden for years, things like the team overall or the offense and defense overall, to me, is mostly a fake number. You can kind of dress that up to make it look like what you yeah, want. Yeah, you can make but a bad team look good. when you look at the player ratings, because even in Madden, you'll look at a team that has a high-rated offense, and, and you're like, how is their offense really rated that high? But then you look at the players and their specific ratings, and you're like, this is not really that high of an offense. It doesn't really add up. And they do this a lot in Ultimate Team, even with individual players. They'll put a high overall on a specific player they're coming out kind of makes it look enticing but when you look at the ratings on that guy it doesn't match up with what the overall is showing it seems as though the right. overall is inflated so i say that to say when it comes to like the overall rankings they do inflate stuff sometimes to make it look a certain way and especially yeah. with this i'm assuming you know big fan bases like usc or colorado they're probably going to bump them up a little bit higher than what they actually are just so the fans aren't like losing their minds like oh my god my team's rated so low but realistically the thing that's going to matter is when you look at the individual player ratings because they even do this with player overalls as well there's certain specific ratings you can bump up to kind of artificially increase a player's overall i can increase i kind of wonder player. if uh <clears throat> ea is going to allow you to play against other people online with your created roster that would be pretty by dope. Just maxing out his awareness, for example. But it gotta, it gotta be fair, obviously. Game, like, the person creating the roster gotta be fair. It's a drastic difference on field because as long as your awareness is at a certain threshold that it's not god awful, you're gonna be decently aware. And then, especially if you're clicking on these players, you're really the awareness yourself. But if they wanna increase the overall artificially, they can bump that up really high. The ratings that really matter in these games that you need to look at when it comes out is like, where their speed, where their throw power, what's their route running, what's their tackling, what's their coverage, what's their blocking those are the things that matter so when you see like a high overall that seems inflated like if you say okay colorado's got an 84 defense that just doesn't seem quite right when the game comes out if you go look at their defense i would imagine they're gonna have some pretty inadequate players on defense and that's really what matters so i think they like to dress up the overalls just to get people talking just to get fan bases going back and forth i don't really think in my experience with madden those numbers have ever been accurate the accurate numbers are mm. going to be the individual player rate yeah now if you want to know more about presentation for this game Whew, like, I, man, I'm almost convinced to get it, but I don't know, dude. Like, I want y'all to comment down below if I really should do this roster from college football. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, it's, it's gonna be a lot of work, so y'all gotta be patient with me if y'all really want me to do it. I will do it if you guys want me to do it. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I will do it. But, unless I get at least 10 to 15, like I said, I'm probably not gonna get the game. Like, it, the game looks amazing like it looks great but i don't know man it's too many it's too many games to keep up with bro and i don't think i'm gonna be able to be able to keep up with college football um madden is just a game i've been playing for years i don't think it's gonna be that hard to play college football i just don't watch enough college football to actually want to play it so um yeah like i said comment like uh comment like subscribe below uh like i said comment let me know if you want me to do it i will do it if y'all do but it's your boy black and that's what we got man